Now let's look uh, more generally at this situation where um, we have a sequence defined by induction by the first term and then an plus 1 is f of an for all n where f is a continuous function. Then we know that if it is convergent then the limit is a fixed point. So in a situation like that, let's say the function is um, the black curve here, uh, a fixed point is a place where when I plug L in the function, I get L for the value, in other words, um, it corresponds to a point on the graph that is also on the diagonal y equal x, because the x and y value are going to be the same. Therefore, uh, the possible limits are either the x or y value of points of intersections of the graph with a diagonal y equal x. These are the candidates. Now let's take a look at how graphically we can uh, look at the behavior of the sequence. Let's say I start with a1 uh, here on the x-axis. Then a2 is going to be obtained by plugging a1 inside the function and then the y value is a2. Well, if I look at the corresponding point on y equal x, right, this is the point on y equal x that has the same y value as the image of a1. But now, when I'm on the uh, red line y equal x, x and y are the same. So x, the x value of that point is also a2. And so if I plug it in the function, the y value is going to be of that point on the graph is going to be f of a2, in other words a3. That's the y value. If I bring it back on y equal x, I look at the point with the same y value on y equal x, the x value is also a3. And then I can continue and plug it back inside the function. You see that in this case it looks like I'm going to have these stairs climbing up to infinity and that the sequence would be divergent. Now let's look at the same situation but where a1 is placed differently on the x-axis and I play the same game. I plug a1 in the function to get a2 so this point here has y coordinate a2. The point on y equal x that has the same y coordinate is a2 a2 so because the x coordinate is a2 I can plug a2 inside the function and then I get a point of y coordinate a3. So here I have a3 a3 on y equal x. If I plug it inside the function I get a point of coordinate of y coordinates a4. So the corresponding point uh, with the same y coordinate on y equal x has both x and y coordinates a4. I can plug that inside my function I get a point of y coordinate a5. So if I plug this x coordinate a5 in the function, I get um, a point on the graph of y coordinate a6. Looking at the point on y equal x of same y coordinate, it has x and y coordinate a6. And I can plug it back in the function. I get a point of y coordinate a7, the point with same y coordinate on y equal x has both coordinates a7, and I can keep going this way, and you see that as I keep going I get closer and closer to my fixed point, and uh, my construction is spiraling down on the um, fixed point. And this looks like it would be the limit of my sequence. Now you see that in this case uh, the sequence takes values that are alternatively above and below the limit or at least this is what it looks like. We're going to study this type of situation in more details later in this video or in the next one. So but it looks like if I look at just the even terms so a2, a4, a6, a8 well, you see that from a2 to a4 uh, it is decreasing, but then a4 is less than a6, a6 is less than a8, a8 is less than a10, and all these are going to be um, these terms that go up towards the limit. 
um, on the left side of the limit. So it looks like, except for the first few terms, the sequence of even terms or terms indexed by even numbers is uh, eventually increasing. And it looks like it is also bounded above uh, by, uh, well, you have A2 and then you have all the other terms that are below our limit. In any case, it is bounded above by A2. As for the terms of the sequence indexed by odd numbers, well, we go from A1 to A3, this is increasing, and then um, from A3 to A5 decreasing, A5 to A7 decreasing, and it keeps decreasing, approaching our limit. So again, it looks like it is eventually decreasing and bounded below by A1. And so we have the limit of uh, the subsequence where I take just uh, A2, A4, A6, A8, and so on. That's approaching uh, a certain number. And then similarly, if I take, that's approaching it in a increasing bounded above fashion. And then uh, the odd terms, so A1, A3, A5, A7, and so on, is approaching the same number uh, in a decreasing bounded below fashion. And because it's the same number, that means that uh, for n large enough, where well, we can get all the terms of the sequence within a given distance of the limit, and so this should be uh, the limit of the sequence An. And so we'll have to look at uh, how to prove that we're going to come back to uh, we're going to come back to this. Uh, let's look at another example where um, we're in the same situation of a sequence defined recursively by the first term and a n plus one equal f of a n where f is continuous. Then, if the uh, sequence is convergent, then the limit is a fixed point. So we're looking at a different picture. We've uh, explained that. Um, Geometrically, that means that we're looking for points of intersection of the first diagonal y equal x with the graph of the function. And then the uh, x and y coordinate are the same on y equal x, and either coordinate should be the limit uh, if, there is, if there is one. So um, in this case, um, we have just one candidate for the limit. Let's say we start with uh, a1 around negative 2.5, and we look at the behavior. So a2 is going to be obtained by plugging a1 in the function. The y-coordinate of this point is going to be a2. If I look at the point uh, of same y-coordinate on the line y equal x, it has both coordinates a2. So I can plug it in the function. I get a point of y-coordinate a3. I look at the point on y equal x uh, with the same y-coordinate. It has both coordinates a3. I can plug it in. I get A4, and so on, and you see that um, I get these stairs that are climbing up and uh, accumulating at our uh, only fixed point. And so it looks like it would be uh, increasing bounded above and converging to this, uh, to this one fixed point. Let's take a look at what happens if we start with A1 on the other side, let's say around 7.5. Then I plug A1 inside my function f of a1 is the uh, y-coordinate, so a2 is um, the y-coordinate of that point. If I look at the point on y equal x with the same y-coordinate, it has both coordinates x and y equal to a2. So I can plug that inside the function. I get a point on the graph that has y-coordinate a3. I look at the corresponding point on y equal x, it has both coordinate a3. I can plug it in the function to get a4, and you see that I get these stairs that are moving down towards the um, fixed point. In this case, uh, I have a sequence that is decreasing, bounded below, convergent to this one fixed point. Now, um, in one of the previous examples, we've seen the situation where we have two subsequences with the same limit. Right? On one end, the um, even terms um, that were increasing converging to L, then the odd terms decreasing, converging to L, and um, we said that it means that um, the limit of the sequence itself, of the original sequence, was the same limit L. 
So the argument here is that if the subsequence with even terms is converging to L and the subsequence with odd terms is also converging to L, then the sequence itself converges to L. And this uh, needs a little bit of justification. It's not very odd. Um, for one thing, it's not odd to believe, so maybe you don't need a proof, but I'm still going to outline a more proper argument for that. Uh, so we want to show that the limit of an is L, assuming that uh, it is L for the subsequences a indexed by 2n and a indexed by 2n plus 1. So to do that I'm going to fix epsilon and show that the distance between an and L is less than epsilon if n is large enough. What we know is that the limit of a indexed by 2n is L, which means that for n large enough, the distance between a indexed by 2n and L is less than epsilon. And similarly, for the subsequence uh, with odd terms, um, if n is large enough, then a indexed by 2n plus 1 minus L is less than epsilon. So now, if I take for n 2n1 and 2n2 plus 1, and I take the maximum of these two things. And I'm going to claim that if n is greater than this number, which is of course a well-defined finite number, then my distance between a n and the limit is going to be less than epsilon. Because if n is of the form 2p, if it's even, n is greater than my capital N, it is in particular greater than 2n1, and therefore p is greater or equal to n1, which means that a2p, which is n, is within epsilon of the limit L, using uh, what we have for the limit of the sequence a2n of even terms. Now if n is odd, on the other end, if it's of the form 2p plus 1 for some p, and it is greater than capital N, it is also greater than 2n2 plus 1, and therefore the condition on p is that p is greater or equal to n2, and using the uh, what we have for the limit of a indexed by 2n plus 1, we find that uh, a indexed by um, 2p plus 1, which is exactly n, is within epsilon of L. So, either way, the distance between a n and L is less than epsilon, 